back to We Play Well Together, Rachel Nelson of the Conscious Soundscapes Club. Hi, everyone. Hi, Rachel. I'm to be here. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, Joel. Hi. How are you? So we did an Instagram Live some months ago, and I'm going to be editing that together with this interview. So for those who do not know, who are you and what are you about? And how did you come to work with sound? I'm Rachel Nelson. I am located in the Rockies in Canada. And sound came to me through yoga. I went to yoga and I really enjoyed the sound. This was about 11 years ago. And I was like, oh, this is great. Then I went to a yoga teacher training and it took it to a new level. They had a sound module and it was like, that's why I feel like that when this happens in yoga. And ooh, and then I bought bowls. I went big and bought seven crystal singing bowls right out of the gate and played them like crazy. And then I decided to take it to the next level and got more instruments and more instruments from metal bowls and chimes. So I went for some education in sound so that I had the knowledge to back up the why it is that I was doing what it was I was doing. And my dad passed away. And so sound became something that was really important to me and helped me move through that. So I got even more instruments. So every time I play a crystal bowl or I play a chime or I play a kalimba, I feel really connected to those I've lost. Mm. So yeah, Cliff Notes version. Handkerchief. Yeah, Hello. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. What would you say to those who are currently swimming in grief or loss? Well, sound makes me happy. And when I'm happier, I'm able to do more things. I serve my community from my saucer, not my cup. And the sound keeps my cup full. So if it's something, a pair of wooden spoons, because that makes me joyful and takes me back to my childhood, or the twinkly times of a kalimba, this is something to take that moment of time of something that makes you really happy to be able to spread that out a little bit more, like a flower, essentially. So it's a bud, and the more you nurture it, it opens up. The same with my emotions. For me, mm. that's what sound does. So mm. I'm mm. on for it. But it also allows you to be with some of those uncomfortable feelings as well. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. The, the sound helps me to feel it till I heal it and get messy with it and be with it. And that's okay. And at the same time, it is also joyful for when things are okay. We connected over Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. You started this Conscious Soundscapes Club mm -hmm. on Clubhouse. And I think there's like 5,000 members now yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah. We're, I think, about to hit 5.6K, which is, it's been a lot of work. It's been very rewarding, but it has been a lot of work. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Clubhouse is this social audio app that popped up and then there've been a lot of copies of it, but it really is its own social media community and it is audio only. So there's no video. Mm -hmm. You have a picture avatar that you can change and there's some some fun whimsical bells and whistles and messaging and recording and things that you can do. But basically it is human voice talking to human voice. And then there are those of us who offer sound offerings as, as part of that. And Rachel has really created something super unique on Clubhouse, which is a community of people who gather to connect and spread joy. I mean, it, it's not just concerts, although you do concert and mm -hmm. meditation offerings. Mm -hmm. um, there are also talk sessions where you've interviewed people. You did this wonderful mm -hmm. musician interview series. 
and then their collaborations with other rooms and other clubs. But the best thing, or what I think is the best thing about the Conscious Soundscapes Club is this real-time community connection that you have created and cultivated with your people, the people who who have been drawn to this right. magical sonic universe uh, where Absolutely. we connect through voice and instruments. And it's it's so unique because you have been using the crystal bowls and also the We Play Well Together instruments, mm -hmm. the kalimbas, the koshi chimes, the hand pan, uh, all the things. And, but then inviting people to come into the room and make sound, which is different than a performance. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it's, it's like a happening. You create happenings <laughs> where uh, people uh, are coming together that. and, and, and the, sometimes it's cathartic. Sometimes it is just creating joy and silliness, mm -hmm. but there is real com community and connection that's taking place. And it's evolved since you started. My Clubhouse story. I got on Clubhouse in April of last year and I was like, I have no idea what this is. I just had FOMO because I had been hearing about it. And when I finally got on, I was like, great, I'm going to meet people. I'm going to be able to talk to friends, to meet new friends. And actually, I had no intention of doing sound at all, at all. It was not, I was like, hey, I want to hang out with people. And then I saw people doing sound. I'm like, oh, so this is not just people talking to each other. Like people do like their IRL stuff on Clubhouse. And so I jumped on that bandwagon and I started with just headphones with no sound equipment. And I was like, Oh, I don't know how this sounds. I'm not sure. But it just built, I became artist in residence at Club Kundalini on Clubhouse. And I played every day for seven days. And then it was like, well, why don't you have your own club? And I'm like, I don't know. And so I did. In the beginning, it was bowls. And I would sit and I would play bowls for 45 minutes to an hour. And there wasn't much talking. We started talking with all of the people who would come into the room. And then you can say, we play well together was actually a really big part of the shift for me because they wanted to get their hands on those instruments too. And so now all my we play well together owners come and play and host their own rooms in my club from chimes to kalimbas to baby turtles. And they come and we all play together or they do their own thing and I do mine and everybody just found their own spot in this really connected community. We Play Well Together has now been collaborating with Rachel. She's an affiliate and a, a featured artist. And so it's a really, really great partnership. We found that working with some of our micro influencers, that there's this community creation that happens that people are really excited about the instruments themselves and about what happens in the space between the instruments, which is the interaction between people. Um, and that's really, that's really what our company is about. It's, it's, yeah, the instruments are great. They're handcrafted, they're beautiful. They're made with a lot of integrity, but it's not just about this cool object. It's about what happens in the interaction between humans using this tool. And Absolutely. So Rachel does that really well. Who and what is Kabuto? Kabuto is yeah. my lovely space drum evolution. And I got him in June when I met Jewel in person and Kabuto came home with me. Aww. When I got home and I got settled, I start, I was playing every day. And I'm like, well, why aren't I playing on Clubhouse while I do this? So I do this 10 to 15 minute room every day on Clubhouse. And it's been pretty amazing. Kabuto has his own hashtag. People come to, to listen. They can't catch it live. They catch the replay. So it's been pretty awesome. He's adorable. <laughs> so Kabuto is the name, your personal, the personal name yeah. of that particular entity that resides in that handpan. Uh, yes. So for anyone who doesn't know, a handpan is a generic name 
for this instrument that's like a reverse of a steel drum. It is hand hammered and has beautiful tones. And I have one behind me here in a slightly different tuning. Yeah. And it's made by a company called Metal Sounds. And there are a couple of different versions. There is a nitro, which is nitrated steel, and then the evolution, which is stainless steel. It has a really long sustain. It's very gong-like. And we're finding that this particular model is really beloved by sound facilitators, sound meditation, and soundscape offerers, such as Rachel, because it's so easy to play it intuitively. There are no wrong notes. You can play it in any pattern. And you can speak to this, Rachel, but I, I think that it's it's an empowering instrument for people who might be a little intimidated about learning how to play a drum or needing to play a particular rhythm or patterns. You can learn those things right. and that's wonderful, but you can you also say, to. I don't want to learn those things. <laughs> I want to just play. <laughs> and it seems like that that's what you do, Rachel. And yet when I listen to you on Clubhouse, I feel that there are, that there's a cohesive pattern it's just coming through you intuitively. So you're just intuiting the pattern, but it's not about like thinking yes. or counting. Or... It's not a one and two and no, I'm not, I'm not counting. And it's almost like that. I'm one of those people. It's like this connection with Kabuto. When I played it for the first time, it was like, oh, everything that you've done until now brought you to me. And so he tells his own stories. I'm just the person who gives them space. He tells his own stories. So that's, yeah. And then your joy with Kabuto caused you not only to name him, but to give him eyes. <laughs> so yes, Kabuto, Kabuto has his own eyes because he goes places and he has adventures. And so he should be able to see those adventures. So yes, he has eyes and um, googly eyes. Has... <laughs> Let's be he clear. Has googly eyes, <laughs> and they Google, and you know, I will. I had so much fun <laughs> filming um, with Kabuto while I was away with his eyes and in the golf cart and just all the things. So, so he has eyes that. that go on the pan, but also on the case, right? And then you put yes. the case. It has a backpack. She puts mm -hmm. it on the backpack and then has a helmet and then is on a scooter and then <laughs> jiving down the street and the, the googly eyes are going like this. So yeah, yep. even when it's not being played, Kabuto goes in the world. Yes. Yeah, well, he's got to go to places to play. So he, yeah, goes in his googly eye backpack on my scooter in the summer and take him to the river to play for clubhouse so yeah kabuto goes everywhere so what is it about that particular instrument that that brings a longing to play it every day is it does it bring you a sense of peace or, or... He's, he's part of my routine now that like the day is not right until I play Kabuto, which is why I had to switch from nighttime to morning. So now I play him in the morning and it just sets the tone for the day to be joyful and at peace with all the things. So it, playing him is almost like a sound ritual yes. that you share publicly with other people mm -hmm. that is for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, by doing it in public versus just doing it in private, the, the feedback from my community is now they have their daily rituals and their daily practices that they see from my doing it in such a public way that they now have their own. And so it's been, it's been really helpful to the community in general. Hmm. Some of them are now do their own rooms mm -hmm. <laughs> with their own sound rituals. So it's been pretty great. Mm -hmm. Full circle. At this 
point, playing Kabuto is like self-care. I have this feeling in in working with you and with listening to you that when you bring in the joy, whether it's playing the ecstatic kalimba or you know whatever the fun the fun silly thing is uh, that we're doing together, that there is this, and I hate to use the word because it's been so um, overused, but mm -hmm. like authentic, authentic. We were talking recently about performative yes. authenticity which can get in some tricky territory because it's, it's very convincing. People who are, are great mm -hmm. performers are great at performing authenticity and writing about it. But right. real, real authenticity is, is being able to be in, in this silly, playful, ridiculous place and then also be with the heaviness and the tears at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and to hold both of those things and not to bypass like, oh, let's just go to our happy place. Let's be that no. that's that toxic positivity. Like, let's be happy, let's be happy. And that's not the sense I get from your work, which is why I love collaborating Aww. with you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I embrace the awkwardness, the sadness, the the mental health challenges days where it's like yeah, I can't, I can't show up for others because I can't show up for myself. And I am fully vulnerable in that. It's like, is it the best thing? I don't know, but it's the best thing for me. And I am that, hmm, what's the word? This is it. This is raw. This is real. And for some people, it's too much. And for me, it's just the right amount of all the things. Yeah. So, of course, you play the Crystal Singing Bowls, which is what you're maybe most known for. Yes. Uh, we don't distribute Crystal Singing Bowls, but so many people in our audience play them, and they go so, they play well together with all of our other instruments. So if you are a Crystal Singing Bowls fan or owner, then Rachel can tell us a little bit about how she incorporated some of the other instruments into her setup. There's, they're so complimentary. Like who doesn't love listening to a Koshi time with a singing bowl? Like this, they blend so well. I tend to now start and or end my sound, my crystal singing bowls with a Sansula or with a kalimba. In addition to playing chimes throughout, it's they blend so nicely together and it just adds that extra layer of what I call emotional sandpaper. Ooh, emotional sandpaper. I don't think I've heard that one before. How do you how do you describe that? Well I I consider the sound, the intention behind the sound that I create is to be mental and emotional sandpaper, to work on your mental and emotional scar tissue. So when you sprain your ankle and you go to PT and they work on that physical muscle, well, the sound for me works on the mental and emotional scar tissue. So it's like this vibrational sandpaper to help smooth out those edges. Mm. Mm. Sandpaper has a real visceral image, and it also, oh, what I like about it is, is there's the image of it smoothing out the edges, but also it brings up a little bit of dissonance for me with, in, yeah. in, a good, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. And I think that's important to talk about because so many people in the sound world are all about harmony. Like, let's run away from dissonance and let's go into harmony. But it's really the interplay of dissonance and consonance that brings about a transformational effect. So I Absolutely. love that. Love that image. Well, you know, the, well, because while the sandpaper is smoothing, it itself is rough. So yes, absolutely. The dissonance is so important. You, it's 
life is not all flowers and roses and sunshine, you know, sometimes it rains, sometimes it snows, sometimes there's sleet, and we have to be able to adjust to all of it. So the, the sound being that emotional sandpaper brings me joy. Talk about kalimbas. For anyone who doesn't know, what is a kalimba? I, I can answer that question. You can talk more about it. So a kalimba is, uh, it's based on an instrument from Africa that is thousands of years old. So it's one of the, the world's oldest instruments. And it is metal tines that are tuned on a resonating body. The ones from the continent of Africa, a lot of them have different kinds of tunings and they're very rhythmically played. There are buzzy kinds of things and rings. And so it's a very distinctive sound. And these kalimbas that we work with are from a German company called Hokama. And I describe them as more of like a hybrid instrument because they have these African roots, but they're tuned more to Western classical music scales. Uh, major and minor chords. So they also have a lot in common with the music box. So if you look inside a music box and you see those tiny little metal tines that play songs, that's very much an influence of this instrument as well. And then Hokama came up with this idea to put the instrument on a drum head, which gives it uh, an extra resonance. And then it also allows you to create a wah-wah effect. So I'm going to play this and then you can Wah wah! It. What do you have to add about the about the kalimbas and the sansulu? There are lots of people who full on play songs on on the kalimba and the sansula, and then there is me. <laughs> I I will eventually maybe learn a song, maybe. But for me, it is like a fairy disco dance party in the forest. <laughs> And there's disco lights and there's a smoke machine, there's laser lights. And this all happens with something that I call a static kalimba. All right, wait, let's just pause for a minute. Ecstatic ecstatic kalimba is a thing. It's a a term that Rachel coined. (laughs) And yes, fairy disco dance party in the forest. I'm an intuitive player. Even with the bowls, with my voice, with everything, I'm an intuitive player. So, yeah, I kind of know what notes are, but I'm not a musician in the traditional sense like some of my other friends are. And so I I play with the, oh, play me, play me, Mm-mm, don't play me. And that's what happens in my head <laughs> when I play, which is, which is different for some people. <laughs> It really is like this. The hair, and, the hair does it. Right? Oh my gosh. It, it, yeah. Yes. It is kind of like headbagging to kalimba. Your whole body gets, it's like you're in a mosh pit playing kalimba. It's, it brings joy. It, it, it just brings joy. Doesn't it? <laughs> is what I ecstatic kalimba on because like who doesn't love that my b5 pocket kalimba that goes with me everywhere even to the coffee shop (laughs) I've been sitting in the post office line since it's that time of year and we stand there for 45 minutes or an hour I stand there and play kalimba and the people just look at me like I'm weird and I'm here for that it's only five notes so you kind of just play it repetitively and it has this trance-like effect because there's only five notes you know b5s make great fidget toys <laughs> for those of us who like to play something and have auditory sounds b5s are perfect and so you're encouraging a lot of your folks to get these little ones and then to come into the room so that everybody can participate 
live and make music together. Yeah. Because get the bag, put it in the bag, take it with you everywhere. I play my little B5 while my husband is driving me around. He thinks I'm wild because sometimes there's a static kalimba happening in the truck while he drives. Um, I've played, I've busted it out at the coffee shop and brought two so that a friend and I could play kalimba while we're at the coffee shop. I played two weeks ago when I was in the city while I got my pedicure when I was with my mom. I was playing kalimba for the people at the nail salon. So kalimba goes with you everywhere. B5 love. B5 snuggle. <laughs> or I can be a B5 sandwich. So we have ecstatic kalimba and then we have conscious Ooh. kalimba. Ooh. Yes. Conscious kalimba for me is like this. just do that for the next four hours like I do Mm. I play kalimba while I'm watching tv with the tv on mute and I am either ecstaticing or I'm conscious and reading the television while I play at the same time oh so you turned off the volume and just put on the the titles I read I do closed caption and then Mm. I can play and be my own soundtrack to whatever I'm watching wow that's gotta be so good for your nervous system yeah, instead of like listening to the craziness of the news or something, just reading it and going, okay, I got this. I'm going to play. Wow. Can you hold up your kalimba so we can see which one you're playing? Yeah. So she's playing the, that is the large sansula. That is the uh, the sansula melody that has 11 notes mm. on it. And it's a, it's a major scale. Although any of the kalimbas, you can retune them any way that you want. So you could get a major scale and retune it to a minor, minor scale or a Dorian mode or whatever it is that you'd like, to, like it to be. Yes, the tuner tool. Mm. It's close. It's close. So we have a little hammer and you just tap it and then you can move these little tines up and down. So they're really customizable, which is, which is cool. And not a lot of people may know that. So this is like the slow swaying kind of thing. Yeah. We've done that on Clubhouse together, right? I get mine, you get yours. Yeah. And we do this I little. Love, I love a little Sansula jam. Little Sansula jam. bedtime kalimba practice because one of my kalimba people said that they now play every night before going to bed and they sleep better they get to sleep faster it's their ritual at nighttime to decompress and slow down and so I was like hey not all kalimba has to be a static with this pink hair head banging on a beach somewhere it can also be slow and so kalimba bedtime practice it is Mm. so every night i play kalimba for 10 to 15 minutes i go back and forth between b5s b9s sensula b15 i go all around and play before bed You know, I've heard research or I've read articles about how when people have trouble falling asleep that they need a bedtime ritual to dim the lights a couple hours before bed Mm -hmm. and to obviously avoid caffeine and screens. 
but that if you have a regular ritual that signals, oh, this is the transition from waking to rest mm -hmm. and that you stick with it, that that can be really powerful. But I've never thought about using the kalimba as a sleep tool. That is really Look, a good idea. There's always space for this on your nightstand, okay? Right. For you to crawl into bed and play or play as you walk to bed. And you know, I've done that too. I, it's, I haven't fallen yet, um, but it's- I'm gonna brush my teeth and then I'm gonna process yes. to bed. Mm -hmm. my kalimba. Absolutely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then some of the rooms are ecstatic, right? We have your ecstatic yes. kalimba playing and that's kind of a group celebration where people come and, and yep. just experience some joy, maybe some dancing. It's social audio, so you can't be seen, but some of Right, so the extra wild. Um, yeah, it's, and it's, you know, we're playing kalimbas that aren't necessarily the same chords they're not in tune with each other and as you like to call it, that cacophony of sound also just adds to the overall joy that we get and and we giggle and we sometimes i snort because i laugh so hard um while i'm trying to play and i'm headbanging at the same time and there's hair everywhere and it's and we all do it we all have this ecstatic dance while we play our kalimbas and just whew. awesome there's no word for that it's just a just, <laughs> yeah <laughs> let it all out so we are both playing sansula renaissance melodies from we play well together that are made by hokuma listen to these two talk and giggle um, and giggle and have some joy in your life what right. else is there? <laughs> and and that is why we're doing it. Because every time Shannon and I interact, we both leave it, we both leave that time spent together happier. And if it's gonna make us happier, listening to us giggle about <laughs> Kalimbus <laughs> also is gonna bring joy to somebody else. Is there anything else you wanna share with us? I just want people to know that. I had no kalimba experience. I had no hand pan experience. And I play both every day. No lessons required. They're intuitive instruments. And don't be intimidated or afraid of them. The joy. Mm. I want to get misty. Um, the joy that they have brought me, the joy that they have brought to the people who I've introduced these instruments to um, is there's no words. There's no words. Um, so don't be afraid. Step outside the box. Why should you want to come to the Conscious Soundscapes Club? The people who have found the Conscious Soundscapes Club, which is not just a club on Clubhouse. That is actually what I go by when I do, when I play in public. So yeah. it's not just a, a Clubhouse club. Um, but on Clubhouse, if, if you want to ripple that sound out that you create to one person or the spoken word that you do, you want to ripple it out to one person who it can change their life. I want to hear from you. I want, I want to co-create some magic with you. So reach out. I think it's a wonderful place for people to try stuff, right? Like, like mm -hmm. in some of these rooms, we, we have happy accidents and 
sometimes it's quite profound and sometimes it's completely ridiculous and we come up with new right. words or word combinations. And I think for many people throughout the pandemic, it's been a, a touchstone, it's been a place to gather, be together. And then it's also a place where we can play our instruments, where we're not just playing them for ourselves, but we're playing them in conversation with one another. So true. Clubhouse brought me to you. So, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. And we got to meet in person, which was pretty magical. <laughs> and we will again. We are going to be at Super Bloom, uh, the Women's Hand Pan event. Yeah, we'll all be together panning. Make sure that if you're going to the workshop in the yurts, it starts in 15 minutes. If you have a curd or a mystic pan, make sure to sit together. Grab a Celtic if you can. 15 minutes, everyone. 15 minutes. How does the new pan feel, Rachel? Different. Different. Um, I didn't spend enough time getting to know her. I know that at this point, um, but I don't know how things sound, where things are yet. Yeah. So it's uh, this whole like first date, I feel. Gabrielle, who's the founder of We Play Well Together, when she started her company, really had this wider vision of, you know, not just being a catalog for cool instruments, although it is that, that there would be this community of people who would make art and play together. It feels like the Conscious Soundscape Club is a little home for We Play Well Together. We're so happy to have that partnership. I love that you guys feel like that because that's how I feel. <laughs> So it, it, it's nice that it is the same for both of us. Yeah, yeah. We hope that the Conscious Soundscapes Club has a long life. Social audio is still pretty new, so we don't know where, where it's going to be five, ten years from now. But I can only imagine if, you, if you're able to keep this going, how this community will grow over time. It's, it's quite thrilling to think about. And we hope that we are longtime friends. Absolutely. Can't get rid of me now. I'm here. Ha, 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 ha.